conference speaker and author Connie Kavanaugh has written an honest and authentic account of what it takes to be a yes man or yes woman to God. <laughs> Her book, Following God One Yes at a Time, helps us bump us out of our ruts and spur us on to the adventure of finding God's path for our lives. Connie, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's just an honor to be here. Uh, and, and obviously you and Melinda called each other. Yeah, we did. Actually, <laughs> want to say, Connie, yeah, we Amazing. called and said we want some red dresses on the couch today. <laughs> we got the memo. You yeah. didn't get the memo. Oh, oh man. <laughs> you, you guys look beautiful. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, I loved your book, you know, because so many of us who call ourselves Christians or Christ followers have given our lives to God. We say, you know, we give him your life, and mm. yet we still find it hard to actually say yes to him, which really mm. should logically follow. Why are we struggling with that? I think a lot of times we struggle because we, we think that uh, this whole idea of God's will is a big mystery, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and also we struggle because we think it's too complicated, you know, and you don't hear an audible voice, and so how can you possibly follow Him? And the beauty is that what I've learned in my life anyway is that God wants me to know His will even more than I want to know it. And so he's going to find a way to get through to me. And so the way God works with me and I think with, with anyone is that he just makes it really simple. And uh, as you mentioned earlier, simple doesn't mean easy. Simple means clear. It's something you can clearly understand. So, so God it reduces the whole um, idea of following him to something simple, something immediate, something possible so it's it's the next step it might not be in the next five minutes but it but it's the next thing that you're going to do the older we get the more we do suffer loss or disappointment or betrayal or you know things don't go the way we planned and I think that's when those barriers begin to pile up because we we get scared you know that it's not going to go the way we hope and you speak from example or from experience as well Connie because you right. went through some dry spouts <laughs> In your in your one life, big long one long. Big <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was trying to be yeah, trying to be <laughs> one long dry spell. That's right. I, I call it the wilderness. It wasn't forty years, but it felt oh, it felt like forty years. And and I even refer to myself in, during that period as a wanderer. Mm -hmm. You know, like a wilderness wanderer, because uh, I, I didn't know how I got there. And I didn't know how to get out. You know, when you when you find yourself lost in a maze uh, somewhere, uh, you really don't know which way to turn to to get out of that. And that's the way that was for me. Mm -hmm. Particularly when you're time. already living in the fishbowl of performance mm -hmm. pressure as a pastor's that's wife. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, you see, I thought I'd been following him, Moira. That's the thing. Like I, I when when I first uh, came to know Christ at the age of 18, it wasn't very long before I had a, a call to ministry. And I married a pastor. I mean, it was he was already a pastor. It wasn't a trick. Mm -hmm. I didn't marry a plumber, <laughs> you know, who's just all of a sudden God, you know, bingo, guess what? No more plumbing. Now I'm going to be a preacher. You know, nothing like that. I married an actual pastor. So I, I knew, you know, what I was getting into. And it was all part of the, it was part of the whole love package. Like mm -hmm. I loved what he did mm -hmm. as well as who he was. And so it was just such a shock to me and to everyone who knew me to see that I could wind up in this dry, dry place. And so it was a really slow, subtle process of spiritually drifting of, of you know, they talk in the Bible about missing the mark mm -hmm. and you don't have to miss it by very much. Uh, and, and what it was is I just, I stopped listening to God because I got scared. There's mm -hmm. one big barrier right there of fear, barrier from following God. I got scared mm -hmm. because things didn't necessarily always turn out the way I thought or I got hurt or, you know, that sort of thing. And so just bit by bit, I, I, I stopped listening to him and, and eventually I stopped hearing him altogether. But you're not saying that everybody who has a desert time is because they're disobeying God or, you know what I mean? Like sometimes you, we just go through those seasons, don't you think? Or do you I think that? everyone goes through them in, in varying degrees. Thanks, I think yeah. some people spend their entire Christian life in a wilderness because they never know there's anything more. Hmm. You Much like made of Mother hmm. Teresa in her chapter where right. she stopped sensing God's presence. She continued right. serving God, right. but she was no longer experiencing his presence, and that was the crisis for you, or at least part yeah. of it. Yeah, where you just, you go through the motions. Like during my wilderness season, you know, I didn't like uh, run off to Vegas or, <laughs> uh, you know, or uh, right. chase after some other man. I mean, I didn't do- You were teaching Sunday school exactly. and doing all those other things. Because I kept thinking, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and my faith is gonna be back because I didn't know where I'd left it. But then where does it you become know? real? Like here's your book saying, say yes to God. Mm -hmm. So even when you don't feel like it, 
do you, is obedience still saying yes, even when you don't feel like it? Oh, it's especially because you know what God's going to call you to do? And this is why following Him is so powerful. He's going to call you to do the very thing that scares you the most. <laughs> He's going to call you to face those barriers. I mean, the reason they're barriers is because you allow them to be. Mm -hmm. Like these are walls that we build ourselves. And every time we say yes, you can visually picture taking a brick. I knew some gals, some sisters who wanted to lose weight. And so they, they named their person they were going to build with their lost weight, Tiffany. And so anyway, last time I checked, Tiffany was almost 300 pounds, you know, yeah. because it's a Good large family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 A lot of sisters who want to do this. And that's the same thing with uh, taking down those walls, those barriers. Every time you say yes, a brick comes off that wall that you have, we, that I have constructed and it becomes, it gets placed directly in front of you. And that's the next step. That so you how can, did you get to the point where you realized that you needed to start saying yes? How did you get out of that wilderness? Mm -hmm. Because there's probably so many women watching that are currently in wilderness wondering, okay, how do I get out? May I just clarify yeah. something? Mm -hmm. And you tell me if I'm wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think people are going to think the yes has to do with where God wants me to go. Mm -hmm. I think this was more about things that were Sorry. in yeah. your character, yeah, baggage that yeah. God needed to allow the crushing to yeah. get at so yeah. that you could get on and do what he wanted you to do. Would exactly. you clarify that, Connie? Exactly. When, when God calls us to say yes, like a lot of the big heavy lifting that's been done in my life has been uh, stuff like forgiveness. Um, you know, I needed to, uh, I can remember exactly where I was when God revealed to me that I had, there was a barrier between me and loving some people, some very dear people, because I had allowed a spirit of bitterness to grow up in me and hurt and unresolved things. And, and God just wanted me to say, you know what, Connie, lots of times things don't get resolved. Mm -hmm. That's, that's not, mm -hmm. that, you don't have to worry about that. What I need you to do is to, to forgive so you can open the door to love again. Because I found that when, as long as I was not forgiving, I couldn't love either. So when I talk about following him one yes at a time, it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna build a school in Africa or you're going to go into public ministry or you're going, whatever that is. A lot of times it's that inner work of changing that suddenly gives you a brand new perspective and a whole new life because suddenly you can love again when you open the door to forgiveness. And your session yes. was a key. Got right. yeah. and, back on that. Yeah. And you're saying, and I think this is funny because when I go and speak, at conferences, I always tell women, don't wait for the Morgan Freeman <laughs> voice to tell you what to do, right? Because that's what I think yeah. a lot of us wait for is yeah. this deep voice saying, Connie, Melinda, do this. Like I think yeah. the yes is saying there is something in us, the Holy Spirit, yes. that is prodding you to do it, to do what's right and good. Exactly. Is that not and right? Exactly. And God sends messages in so many ways. I mean, all of the, all of the really trust, uh, trustworthy ways are the Word and godly people and godly preaching and Bible study and good Christian books. But God can get through to you no matter what. Mm -hmm. And I tell a story in my book about about this little gal who who saw a pizza box on the mm -hmm. side of the road and she had an important decision that she had to make and she was just at war within and God was speaking to her and speaking to her. She saw this pizza box and she just was compelled to stop, pick up the box because she knew that company had little pithy sayings inside. She flipped it open and it was exactly what she needed to hear. Basically, she needed to go and tell the truth to someone and it was all a matter of integrity and that's exactly what that little saying inside the box was about. So God will use anything. But is that what you consider the chocolates on the trail. You say God leaves us chocolates on the trail for us. And that speaks our language, Connie. I mean, oh, yeah. if there were actually physical chocolates on the trail, I'd be like, okay, I, God, I'm following you. Here I go. Not follow God. Yeah, Have love dog. Chocolate. 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 Okay, chocolate, chocolate. chocolate. I'll follow. Yeah, what I mean by chocolates on the trail is this is, well, I should, I should preamble a bit and say what I mean by that, uh, where that story came from. It's some friends of mine who love to hike, then had babies and lugged them along on their backs. And then the babies, you know, had to walk on their own and they wouldn't, they would just flop down and cry. So so daddy put chocolates on the trail and mommy kind of herded the cats, you know, and, and so these kids learned to hike. And I find it's the same way with us that God, our loving Heavenly Father, He knows that at any moment we're going to flop down on the trail and we're going to start to cry, I, I can't do this, there's too many rocks, I don't want to go anymore, I'm tired, you know. 
And so he will put something there and it will be a proof. I, I just call it a proof. It'll be a proof that yes, you heard me right. Yes, you're on the right path. And it can be something uh, inner as a sense of peace. It's like, I know this is right. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. doesn't make sense. I know it's right. It can be his power to actually do something that you know you cannot do in your own strength. It can be a provision. He can provide for your needs. So many things. Or it can be just somebody, a, an email, a hug, a friend, a word of encouragement. Those are all chocolates. Ah, you know, Connie, great. I think what's so cool about your story is that you you had to be honest publicly about being a spiritually dry woman right. in, with your husband in public ministry, which is yes. so hard. And I think one of the problems is that we get isolated many times when we're going through times like this. You know, you yeah. said that other people too can speak in your life. And yeah. I just wanted to take a minute here to say that we have people 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's the coolest thing we do here. I always say that. but. They are just there to talk to you and they are wise people. They are loving. They will pray with you. And I just have a sense that there's women watching probably because we all have stuff, you know, yeah. like that we need to like deal with just and sometimes praying with somebody else when you have to confess something or do yes. forgiveness is the perfect thing. So just want to encourage you to call those lines.